Hey gang, welcome back. Okay, so in this video, I kind of want to talk about ethers. And I know we've been talking about them a little bit, but I want to talk about them in the context of protecting groups. And by protecting groups, I mean using ethers to disguise part of your molecule to then do some chemistry, and then, then you would undisguise your molecule. So you would make an ether to do something and then take the ether off. And again, a bunch of fancy words, it always makes more sense when we look at something concrete, like an example. Okay, so I put through this reaction up here on the board, and uh, I hope you weren't, you know, freaking out, because it's really not that bad. But, we've done green reactions, so what I, what I want, and I'm going to comment on this reaction, but, the first step of this would just, you'd make a Grignard, right? You'd think. Right here. And then, the second step is designed for this Grignard to attack this carbonyl carbon, right? And I suppose I should have put a workup step. And then that would feed into this product. I put the asterisk there just because I threw it up without drawing it for you guys. Just wanted to show you what it would look like. Okay. However, what I'm going to tell all of you, faithful Joe Kemmers at home, is that not only is this a bad reaction, this is not going to work. This is, again, we're mad. This is bad. Terrible reaction. This will not work. Here's the reason why. As soon as you would do this first step, as soon as you would generate your Grignard, remember that we've talked about, and I hope I wasn't too annoying to drive this home, Grignards are not only good nucleophiles, but they are extremely strong bases. Okay? So what happens is, is when, as soon as you generate this Grignard, if it's not going to do it within itself, intramolecularly, what this Grignard will do is it will find another one of itself, whether it's a Grignard or not, and it's going to just do an acid-base reaction, and every single Grignard you generate will be spoiled by doing an acid-base reaction. So. I may have mentioned it before, remember Grignards can't be in the presence of water, anything protic, otherwise you spoil your Grignard. So this is what I mean by, if only there was some way we could protect this or disguise this, make a Grignard, attack the carbonyl, and then take that disguising piece away, right? We could complete our reaction by protecting part of our molecule, okay? And I'm going to show you guys with this particular example how we can do that, okay? And this is like a... This was an example, oh, I need that back. This was actually a question on one of my old final exams. So this is uh, it's coming straight from Pitt's finest. So how can we change this sequence to make our reaction work? And here's how we can do that. So we need to make, we need to remove this protic character from our, protic character from our molecule. So what we're going to do, I'm sorry, I'm glancing at my notes a little bit, is, and this is a famous way to protect your molecule a little bit, I don't know if famous is the right word, but it's a popular way, I guess I should say, is you throw in T-butanol and acid. So you're going to need acid to make this work. And I'll show you the mechanism, uh, actually I'll show it to you right now. So the way this mechanism is going to work is you are going to protonate this, this combo, you will protonate this oxygen right here. H2, uh, sorry, I'm going to draw sulfuric acid in this way so I don't have to draw the whole thing out. H2SO4. So oxygen is going to get protonated. So now we have water, right? Tertiary carbon, good leaving group. This thing will leave through solvolysis. I'm going to draw this over here. Now we have a carbocation. This is what your molecule will attack. So you have the oxygen now. It attacks the carbocation. Uh, oxygen. So there's the three carbons right here, or the four carbons rather, that we just added. Something will come by to clean this up. Probably the conjugate base of this. The point being, now what we've generated is this 
compound right here. So you can see how it's an ether, right? Oxygen with carbon chain on both sides. This is protected. Now we've removed the protic character, protic character that ruined our Grignard before. And I'm going to erase this to make room. I'm sorry. So now, with this new ether, we should be able to operate business as usual. I'm going to leave that up over there. So, if then we now throw in the magnesium and the THF, or whatever, you know, diethyl ether, or whatever you, you use to make your Grignard reagents, our Grignard will look like this. This half of the molecule, the left side, will be un, unaltered. Now we've made our Grignard, and there's no protic source to ruin our Grignard now. Now we can add in acetone, and we can also add in the workup. Because this thing will attack, electrons kick up, this carbon is bonding to this carbon, we'll dot this one, asterisk down, O minus, our H plus will protonate this, and I'm just going to erase this for space, for the sake of space. And so, now what do we do? Because we have what we want, and it's just as easy. So we, we did ether formation, now we need to do ether cleavage, right? We need to just regain our alcohol. And the way you do that is you still add in some, some acid and some water. So I just did generic H plus, but you can absolutely go ahead and reach for some H2SO4 and then the water. So this will just catalyze the reaction with acid. The water will make that happen. And I'll actually show you how that will work. Uh, the H2SO4 will protonate this. And then water will come by and attack right there. So what that will do, there's the water we had. Someone will clean him up. You will be left with that. And that is how you can go ahead and use an ether protecting group to get what you want done. So it's, it's whenever part of your molecule doesn't agree with the reaction sequence, you can go ahead. This is like your, your go-to ether combination. It, it works like a charm. Then you can go ahead and make a strong base, whatever you need to do and then make it happen, and the way to cleave it off is just by water and some catalytic acid. All right, guys, this will come up every once in a while. Uh, just keep it tucked in the back of your head. I'll try to incorporate some problems for you to practice with it, and I'll see you in the next video.